Hey guys, and welcome to the first lecture in the lighting portion of our course. Uh, this lecture we're going to be talking about a lamp called the Hemi lamp. And uh, it's going to be useful because uh, it's going to allow you to add some lighting to your scene that simulates lighting that you might find from an ambient uh, light in the sky. So think about uh, how the blue sky outside kind of adds some fill light into your models. And then you get a pretty good approximation of what a Hemi lamp does. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add some simple geometry uh, that will let us build the scene out so that um, we've got something for the shadows to hit when we start adding these lights. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, subdivide this plan a bit by going to the W menu and then clicking subdivide. Um, so let's select this back row and then extrude up a little bit and add some curvature back here. What that's going to do is create a nice little fall off so that if we have um, any shadows that get this far back, they're not going to really, uh, you know, alter um, how our model looks in the scene. So I'm just going to really slowly transition into that lip so we get a nice fall off. All right, let's go back into shaded view. Now this isn't smooth, so I'm going to go over here, hit smooth, and that's going to create sort of this nice little transition. Make it a little wider, scale it out. All right, so there we go with our basic uh, studio lighting set up for our model. It's going to let us uh, preview nicely how things are going to go. So we also need a camera because you can't render anything without a camera. So if we add a camera by doing this, it's going to put it right here at the fire hydrant. I'm going to move this up and back, maybe a little to the side. Now I'm going to hit zero to go to my camera view. And if I rotate while I have the camera selected and I'm looking through the camera, I can see what I'm supposed to be seeing when I render. So as you can see, kind of line things up there. Now the camera by default, if you go to the camera settings while it's selected over here, it's going to be set to 35 millimeters, which is going to simulate a 35 millimeter lens. So I'm going to change this to 100 because I like the telephoto look for uh, what we're trying to accomplish here a little better. And then I'm just going to move this camera back um, and I'll line it up that way. Um, so that's going to kind of give us a nice little posed setup for our our. Um, for our fire hydrant until we jump into the final rendering setup. And it's gonna allow us to just play with the lights a little bit um, and see how the shadows fall on the ground, how it interacts with the chain, all that kind of stuff uh, in a nice little environment here. So let's get into the light. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add what's called a lamp and it's gonna ask me what kind. So I'm gonna pick Hemi for hemisphere. And then again, it's gonna put it right here at the origin. I'm just gonna move this up. Okay, now let's get into the hemisphere. If we just add it and then we go to our render view here and we hit render, that's what it looks like. Um, so not great, <laughs> not a lot of good stuff there to look at, but uh, let's go into the settings and tweak some of these a little bit. So energy is gonna tell the uh, tell Blender how, how powerful this lamp is. So if I put it down to 0 0.1 instead of one, and then render again, it's gonna be a lot shallower, a lot dimmer light, okay? And remember, this is supposed to be sort of a fill light, so it's not gonna be the key light in your scene, it's not gonna be the, the most prominent light, so you don't need it to be high, um, not normally. So I usually lower it down to 0 0.3, 0 0.2, somewhere in there, and uh, you can change this to kind of a bluish color if you're going for the sky look. And then when you render it, it adds kind of a nice fill. If you were going for a moonlit scene, this might be a nice quick way to add some of the moonlit characteristics of a scene. Uh, it's a little more cinematic that way. Um, and so that's pretty much how you would change the color and the power of the light itself. Um, this lamp type doesn't have any shadows, so you're just gonna see highlights and then shading on the model itself. It's not gonna cast any shadows because that's not why it's there. It's there to add just a kicker uh, with, with terms of just fill in your scene. So this is a nice lamp to add in when you, you know, you've started setting your scene up with other lights and you just need to add some boost to 
uh, lessen the contrast of the scene. This might be a good lamp to use. Um, the last thing we're going to talk about here are these two options. These two options um, are specular and diffuse, and if you turn these off, it will change how the light looks when it hits your models. So let's see what this does. If I turn off diffuse, that's going to turn off the ability of my light to shade anything. So all I'm going to see are the highlights, and everything else is going to be black. Now if I do the opposite, and I turn off specular, but I leave diffuse turned on, you're not going to see any highlights, but you're just going to see the shading on the model. So these two together are what make up the hemisphere lamp. If I turn these both off, you don't see anything because there's just nothing happening in the scene. Um, one other thing to note is uh, you can also set this lamp to only render uh, whatever it touches on this layer. So if you had other models out here on other layers, it's only going to render what it sees on that layer. So that's handy and also this negative feature here. Let's go out here, let's duplicate this lamp, move it over, so I've got two Hemi lamps now. So if we just render this, it's, it's a little brighter than it was, because it's adding those, those energies together. Um, but let's say we've got two Hemi lamps and we want one of these to be uh, kind of a light coming from this direction, and then we want this one to kind of be our shadows to give some contrast coming from another direction. Well, if I switch this one to negative instead of uh, leaving it off, as I do on this one, when I get a render this, it's gonna suck the light out of the scene on this side and leave the light over here. So um, I probably want to go over to this lamp that has negative turned on, turn this down a little bit, maybe 0.6, see what that looks like. And uh, as you can see, it's really taking that down. So let's change this. As you can see, it's, it's really taking that up. So if I go down to 0.1, it's gonna be a lot more subtle. I was at 0.28 or something like that before, so 0.18. See, you get a little bit more darkness around here. Let's go down to point uh, one five, point one, one oh five. As you can see, it's getting lighter and lighter. So if you want to get darker, go back up to point three. And let's see, it's a really sharp fall off. So between point two eight two nine and point two, you're going to see quite a bit of difference. Looks like point two with the current setup is kind of the sweet spot we're at. So it's a nice way to quickly take out light. Uh, if you're familiar with anything within cinema about how they light things, they, uh, they sometimes use what are called flags and uh, it will just be a big black piece of cloth that uh, they throw up that will um, kind of take out some of the reflected light that is around the scene. So it's a nice way to sort of simulate that, that negative lighting that's coming from around the scene. And uh, if you wanted to add some quick contrast, that would be the way to do it. So let's get rid of this, put this back in the middle, and uh, let's talk about something else with this light. Now you'll notice I rotated the, the direction of this lamp and the direction it was facing. If we render that, it's kind of coming from the top down to the left, as you can see here. Um, you should note that both the Hemi lamp and the Sun lamp, which we're going to talk about next, take their lighting information based only on that rotation. So it doesn't matter where they are located in the scene. If I put this way over here and then render it, nothing changes because it doesn't matter where it's located. The sun lamp and the Hemi lamp are environment lights. So um, they're gonna be simulating lights that come from the whole world, not just objects. Um, and, the, and the lighting, uh, the light sources are so vast and distant from where our scene's origins are that it doesn't matter uh, it, it doesn't come into play when, when we are creating the shadows for our objects. So just remember if it's the Hemi or the Sun, um, here or here, for the lamp type, you're not going to need to worry about where that's at. You can even put it under the model and then render it, and again, it's not going to change anything. So um, that's going to about wrap us for the Hemi light. It's useful, remember if you want to come in here and add some just basic shading.
Um, but uh, again, if you don't need the fill light, you may not need it. Um, so in the next lecture, I'll cover settings for the sun lamp and we'll get into uh, adding some actual shadows to our, our model. I'll see you there.